Believe it or not, y'all, segues perfectly into this Lou Elizondo clip. If we can cue that up, the Dr. Mount's topic clip. That we're, we're certainly uh, against this, this effort. Uh, and, and only because, of, again, their, their philosophical belief system. I had nothing to do. In fact, I, I had one, I remember the conversation very well. Um, this is a person I respected tremendously, very, very senior person. He told me, he said, Lou, I want you to stop, stop doing this. I said, okay, sir, I, I certainly can, but may I ask why? And he says, well, we already know what it is. Now, at that moment, I, I honestly thought maybe it was our own technology. I was running up against some super uber secret sap and, uh, you know, they were telling me to stop. And I said, okay, sir, so, so it's ours? And he said, no, that's not what I'm saying. And he said, uh, he asked me point blank, have you read your Bible lately? And I wasn't quite sure where he was going with that. And I said, well, sir, I, 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 I think I know what it says. What, where are you going with this? And he said, well, then you would know that these things are, are demonic and we should not be pursuing them. Yeah. And uh, I, I, he, was, he wasn't kidding. He was, that's exactly how, how he face. felt. So this is a Pentagon. And, this is a DO, Department of Defense official uh, saying, stop looking at UFOs because they're demonic. Correct. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man. Did the CIA write Wind of Change by the Scorpions? (laughs) (laughs) Dr. Loeb, what percentage chance do you give it that you have indeed uncovered extraterrestrial or non-human technology. Prior to your abduction, did you believe in UFOs? All things unexplained. So some of that I think, sir, will say for close session. Following is from our guest appearance on the Calling All Beings podcast. Find them on YouTube or wherever you podcast at Calling All Beings. to it tonight party people welcome back to calling all beings i'm your host dj along with my brother who just done returned from his southwest vacation we haven't even heard what kind of craziness he got into up there but i'll tell you what we have some special folks here tonight that i said i just got to talk to once i saw what they was getting up to so uh without any further ado let let me uh uh, let let this man speak because it's been a while. We did one or two shows while he was on vacation. Money Nathan back in the building. Good to be back, guys. Uh, I did get a ca- chance to catch those shows, so great job while I was out. Had no doubt you guys would crush it. So well done. Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, two thousand miles of driving, American Southwest road show with the kids. It was a great time. It was hot, very hot, but it was really fun. Uh, it's never uh, cab is never as much fun or as cool as when you're not there. Uh, but we did our best to just kind of stay active. You know, uh, our, one of our guests would say, you know, stay in the gym, keep shooting those threes, make sure, you know, you don't lose your stroke. Uh, <laughs> with that, uh, the, our next uh, co-host and OG, I mean, this girl get into it, whether or not you want a spirit kicked out of the bathroom, whether you want uh, your Bigfoot baby babysat so that that way, you know, Bigfoot daddy and mama can go out, and have a good night. Or uh, if you just want to, like, you know, get abducted by a UFO, Deb's down for all of it. How you doing, homegirl? 
Well, my jaw's been on the floor a lot today, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's been kind of an exciting day in UFO world, so last couple of days actually the last you know few months maybe last few years it's been kind of an adventure yeah i was talking to christopher sharp today deb and i was so i thought there was nothing happening nothing was going to happen and man was i so wrong about that given where we are now uh with that let's transition over to our our resident bigfoot expert uh, two decade researcher and just dope all around analyst of anything that has to do with the unexplained. What's up, Matt? Oh, you meant me. Yeah. <laughs> it, it should have been obvious. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Nothing, man. It's good to be good to be back on air with you, with you two guys. Uh, I wish the other two was in the building, but, uh, you know, before long, we'll, we will wrangle them, so to speak, now that Nathan's come from the Southwest. Uh, but Nathan, um, so I saw these guys, um, all the stuff they were putting out. They look cool. They sound cool. They have the Skinwalker Ranch thing on lock. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I know it. And so I said, man, wouldn't it be cool if we did a roundtable, a fireside, with these guys so that everybody could bring a topic and we could just get all up into it, hit any of the three topics. There's no wrong topic to have. Uh, and so they, they accepted and that was so dope. So that's totally not what I thought we were doing. I thought we were just sort of having an on air fight with this other podcast show. It's not, it's not <laughs> the jets happening. and the sharks. <laughs> it's not really? about like that. If we're in the bar right now, we'd be fighting right alongside him, man. Change my material. Bring, bring it on, baby. I'm going to take a bar stool. You go near my friends from All Thing Unexplained. So uh, without further ado, what we're talking about here is the brothers and sisters from other mothers and other misters. So put your hands together for Mississippi's own Dr. Mouse. CJ and Smitty! Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to be here. Can yeah. I get it? Hey, man! Hey, man. Hey, man. Okay. As Smitty and I grew up on old school Memphis wrestling, I'm talking Jerry Lawler, yep. I'm talking Ooh, Rick man. Flair, I'm talking Jimmy Superfly Snooker. So we ready for, you know, off the turnbuckle, loser leave town match if we have to. <laughs> I'm with you. I know all of those uh, wrestlers that you're talking about. That was my era as well. Although you look younger than me, which is slightly upsetting, but you know, not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> he just has a really good diet. I promise. He's much older than he looks. <laughs> it's all the cucumbers well, and apples. Well, well, cucumbers got, going out my ears here. Stream up close. It's it's not as not as impressive. We've seen it. <laughs> 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 well, the cabbies would, would basically say the same as good as I may look tonight. I look much worse in person, uh, true. but that's okay. You know, I, I work with what I've got. Um, anyway, I want to say hi to Julie in the chat. Julie, what's up, homegirl? Thank you for doing this for us, for uh, manning the chat and doing the ranch duties. I forget what you call that. Uh, Mick? Mick, I don't know what you're doing up at this hour over in the UK, but thanks for being here, brother. I'm going to tell you guys, Mick has sent me... Um, some video and some audio of him with the spirit box. And there is some very audible answers that he gets from the spirit box. And the video he sent me showed an entity sitting next to him on the sofa. Uh, <laughs> it's really, it's wild really stuff. wild. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he getting into some business, but you know what I'm being that I, I jaw jacked with, um, with uh, Tim, I want to turn the first question over to my brother, the co-conspirator of this joint in fun, entertaining, and interesting uh, talk of the unexplained uh, money. Nathan, take it away. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right. So do we want to jump into roundtable? We want to jump into a little bit of... Uh... I, I want to find out about these guys a little I bit. Do I, I, I do, too. I heard about some sand volleyball and CJ. Oh, my goodness. I want to see what's going down here. Some Top Gun stuff right there. Um <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. It's just like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what that's yeah. what I, everyone who plays Sam Beach volleyball. That's <laughs> that's the only image I have of it. All the guys wear there. jeans. And yeah. Yeah. Slow motion. <laughs> slow mo. <laughs> glistening. Music. Girls are in slow mo bikinis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Epic. Epic. Uh, well, yeah. Let's jump into this. So, um, what I've been thinking about different things to talk about, and I wanted to get your because I know you guys come from a unique perspective. 
you, you tackle a lot of interesting topics, you know, just like we do a lot of paranormal stuff, UFO stuff. How do you sort of stay grounded in your own lives? Like when you're, when you have this interest, you know, it's like, do you, do you feel like you have kind of two sides of yourself? The, the public side that is out in the world and the podcaster side, how do you navigate these spaces? I'm going to go first. <laughs> I'm so gonna I, I got um, pulled, wrangled into this. I was not a believer in any way, shape, or form. UFOs, Bigfoot, whatever it is, didn't think about it, didn't grow up talking about it, learning about it, anything. And Tim begged me to kind of jump into this endeavor with him. And I came in as a skeptic. And the first person we interviewed, I was sold. I mean, I truly believed the experience that this individual had. There were some people that have come on our show that I begged Tim not to have on our show. I thought we were going to lose all credibility because their story sounded just so wacky. Mm -hmm. And then they came on and I fully believed them. So for me, I'm a mom. I've got young kids. My hardest thing is being this podcast host of a paranormal show about UFOs and aliens and then having like kids over for play dates. Like I'm the UFO mom. Mm -hmm. How do I get my <laughs> friends to trust me with their kids? And so every once in a while, someone will be like, oh, I hear you do a podcast. I have to feel out the room a little bit like, yeah, I do. It's um, about UFOs and alien what, abductions. What's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Did it is say? tricky for me. And some of the people we've had on like Travis Walton. And there's been these crazy stories. I can't sleep at night afterwards. I really feel like something is surrounding me. Like I've opened the universe up and all of a sudden Interesting. I have all of these spirits and things following me. So it's been hard to walk the line for sure. What is that behind you, CJ? No. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play with me, city. Telescope. Don't play. <laughs> All right, uh, Nathan, you want to get Debs in there? Uh, uh, or I'd like to hear from the other guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, with, please. Uh, yeah, please. I'm good, same. good one. Thank you. Sorry about that. Well, I tell you what, CJ hit the nail on the head on some of that stuff there as far as staying grounded. And we were talking about this the other day, and y'all, we, we've got a lot of kids between the three of us, and CJ and I have kids very similar age, and things get real weird at a play date when UFOs <laughs> come up. Like, and so, <laughs> so that kind of helps keep you grounded there. Uh, and then I know for me, like I, I consider myself, you know, always kind of had a foot in multiple worlds. One, Smitty and I both grew up in rural Mississippi in religious households, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yet we're also, you know, educated and we consider ourselves academics. And so, you know, it is hard uh, having a foot in both worlds. But, but what we have discovered, and I've never really realized this until we started this podcast, is that there truly seems to be some sort of thread that connects all of this. And I mean the spiritual, the paranormal, the quantum, the the macro, the micro, the universe, the, the supernatural, Bigfoot, UFOs. We've seen it on our podcast. It's not something we have created. It's not something that people who have something in common or know each other bring to us. These are separate people separated by, by decades and, and separated by location and stories, but yet something weaves all their stories together. And I'm not quite sure what that, that is, but we're kind of on a search for it. And, and that helps keep me grounded. Also, I grew up Coast to Coast AM fan, hmm. and I was always a big fan of how they, they went about especially Art Bell, how he went about his interviews with folks, right? And it didn't matter the story. He treated them, you know, just matter-of-factly, like, hey, let's hear what you got to say, and with genuine interest and respect, and that's how we treat all our guests and all the stories we hear, and I think that that also helps keeps you grounded. I love it. We're coming back to that topic later. I can guarantee it. So great to uh, to hear that feedback. The internet, right, Nathan? Oh man, <laughs> the thread. I love it. Yep. I'm kind of like mounts. I just, uh, you know, I kind of include some of the stuff. It depends in certain parts of my life, and I exclude it from certain parts of my life. But my kids at school think it's really cool that I'm a podcaster. Of course, some of them think I'm a little crazy because of about UFOs and Bigfoot, but. Uh, we have some subscribers there at our high school that that listen to us on a regular basis, and 
you know, it's like he said, uh, unsolved mysteries was one of the big things that I remember watching uh, when I was young. I would love the parts where they would have the UFO abductions and and the other paranormal things. That was my favorite part of unsolved mysteries. Some of the rest of it kind of gave me nightmares, but those did. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, uh, his voice could give you a nightmare, I think. So. <laughs> Robert Stack. Yep. Hell Robert yeah, Stack. just the music. And man, there's no chance Great of show. going right to sleep. <laughs> and then the X Files, man. The X Files was really what drove a lot of, of things, especially for my generation, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. CJ started out as our Scully, and now she's become our Molder. So <laughs> <laughs> I often fail in my job, so this is not surprising. <laughs> You know, I want to say uh, uh, just thank the two of you just right off the bat for being educators. Those are heroes to me. Um, and in fact, I'm I'm heading home uh, to New York in a couple of weeks, and I'm going to have dinner with uh, coaches, uh, coaches slash teachers from my high school, and I graduated in '85. So you guys have a, a big impact on kids, whether it's writing books or, or or being in the classroom, as both of you guys have done. So thank you. Well, thank thank you. Um, Absolutely, oh, so- and CJ has been a teacher too. CJ, what's up, homegirl? Amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it, I, I, me. so, um, <laughs> it, <laughs> okay. So you're not in teaching now. Well, okay. I'm raising three young children, so I feel like I'm teaching that's, every second of every day that's now. Very true. Yeah. yeah. Huge job. Deb and Nathan both can relate to, and Matt as well has has. Uh, how many children you have in the house, Matt? Is it just one or more? Uh, we're down to one at this point, unless you count the dog. <laughs> I mean, the dog is probably the biggest child that we have. Uh, but yeah, Matt, it's so funny, man. This guy is so funny. He can make the mundane sound funny. Um, I really just, uh, not to cut off Deb, but I really just kind of think the audience would be cool to hear just kind of how you guys met. Cause, uh, Tim told me this story, Dr. Mounts and, um, and it's kind of cool because, I love sports. I love basketball and volleyball, like what you guys were doing. So, so please tell that uh, real quick, if you guys would. Sure. Well, you know, Smitty and I kind of grew up together. I hate to think how long it's been since we first met, right, Smitty? It's been well, it's been at least twenty years. At least twenty. I was my yeah, maybe over twenty. Oh, I and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, exactly. let's not actually let's tell cease get the calculations. As a matter of fact, before we get too <laughs> deep in it, but. <laughs> Smitty and I were both teaching at the same school together, and he taught history. I taught math and some PE, and I was coaching, and he was coaching, right? I but, would say teaching math was loose. No, hey. I'm <laughs> I'm you, you come up with the junior high basketball game plan and seven, you know, get, you know uh, lesson plans for math. Uh, something's got to go, okay? But uh, something's going to be less than 100%. But Smitty and I actually bonded over cryptids because we have some local cryptids there in Mississippi. And I was aghast to find out that a cryptid that I had heard about from a dude. So I get this y'all. I didn't tell DJ this. I I worked with a dude at a shirt factory named Buck Rogers. All right. I kid, kid you not Buck Rogers dude drove around in a car, had Christmas lights hooked up to the outside that, you know, bu- that lit up to the base of his, Radio, that kind of guy, Play, uh, played <laughs> softball with us. Dude batted cross-handed, like you know, you know, what I'm talking about cross-handed. Yes, and played in jorts and and could stroke the ball. I'm like, how do you do that in jorts and cross-handed? But Bobby Buck, barefoot too. Yeah, barefoot, barefoot. It's like, like men's adult softball. <laughs> men's adult softball, barefoot. But Dave was telling me at the shirt factory one time um, about him and his grandpa. You know, they were out going catfishing. And and with this was at work, by the way, and possum head man jumps out, knocks him off the path, right, and almost kills his grandpa. And he just keeps going back to work. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on now. You can't yeah. just go. You can't just go back to packing shirts up. Who what, possum? What possum head man jumped out? And and Buck Rogers was dead serious about this. And and years later, uh, sure enough, Smitty. And I both, you know, realize we both know about possum. Hey, man, not not just us, but a lot of other people in the community, right? And so we kind of bonded over cryptids. And then I that was in Mississippi. I moved to North Carolina in 2010, and CJ and I 
met at sand volleyball for whatever reason my neighborhood has a sand volleyball league that's been going on about 20 years and cj of course grew up in california her dad was a volleyball coach right yeah yeah my dad and player player very good volleyball player he's very tall and um, I heard a lot growing up, like, your dad's so good at volleyball. Why aren't you? But I thought I was pretty good, but not compared to him, I suppose. So, yeah, I, I roll up from um, from Southern California to this my first day to play volleyball. And here comes Tim with his very thick Mississippi accent. He's lost it, or I can understand it a lot better. But at the time, I mean, I was just aghast that somebody from Mississippi could be as good at volleyball as he is. Tim is quite a good volleyball player, but I couldn't understand him. I mean, every time the man would talk, I was like, one more time. Can you put that on repeat? I just have no well, idea what you said. And then of course he'd talk about things like possum head man and chocolate biscuits and gravy and think that I'm like poof, lost. So we instantly, I think he probably didn't know too many people from Southern California. I knew no one from Mississippi. We sort of dug into one another to learn more. And here we are. It's like, it's like this Jeff I saw the other day. It said, um, yeah, it, 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 Jeff, it, it said, I, when I get nervous, I speak more Southern. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I, that's so true. I re- I do that myself. I don't even know I'm doing it. But uh, Smitty and CJ and I had always talked about, well, we, we started uh, talking about doing a podcast together. And there never was a right time. But then COVID hit. And then boom, Zoom, you know, mm-hmm. Microsoft Teams, like out of nowhere, all these video conferencing technologies just exist, like. Did Zoom exist before 2020? I don't think so, but boom, there it was. My kindergartner's on it. You know, we're sitting around the house. My my son ain't learning anything except how to fish better. And <laughs> we're like, it's like now or never, right? Like we're gonna we're gonna make this podcast thing happen. And and credit to Smitty. Uh, and and I want to backtrack real quick. CJ talked about volleyball, and somehow I grew up in what I call the redneck volleyball capital of the world. Thanks to Mississippi. <laughs> Don't know why, but the gym that that doubled y'all on the weekends as a wrestling arena, you know, and and during the week as a volleyball, you know, league place, like the smoke would be thick in the air. I'm talking about old school. Like these dudes <laughs> just love volleyball. I don't know why, but they did. We just played volleyball, man, all the time. But uh, credit to Smitty, he reached out and found got our first, you know, person to come on the podcast with us, and um, he was involved in one of the most famous UFO cases of all time in rural Mississippi where over a dozen law enforcement officers. It was actually two dozen. Two, uh, over two dozen law enforcement mm-hmm. officers, and he was one of them. And he was only comfortable going by Mr. Billy on with us. And he's getting kind of older now, but CJ and Smitty can tell you this guy brought it. Like he was so honest, so sincere, and you could tell we realized, man, what have we gotten ourselves into? This this goes beyond just talking about it. And I mean, when you start hearing the traumatic real life experiences of folks, it hits you in a different way. I, I was gonna say there are a few topics that that are more interesting to podcast about than this one because you you kind of really never, especially if you're three pronged as your show is and, and ours now is, is you're never going to really run out of topics. So, um, and, and Matt, you know, Matt and I have discussed this because he's interviewed so many Bigfoot witnesses over the span of two decades. He also has, you know, physically seen them himself on more than one occasion in Oklahoma, uh, on outings. And by the way, I am, I'm moving to Georgia. I don't want to say what company I'm going to work from, but I'm going to be close enough that uh, we can actually go on a Bigfoot outing. You guys that are in North Carolina, we can go do an outing since uh, I'm going to be relatively close. Yes. Hey, you know what, DJ? There's a great Bigfoot museum in North Georgia. Yes, sir. I have dro- I've driven past it, and because my wife and pets were in the car, I didn't stop and go there. Uh, huh. I regret that. Uh, but now I'm going to have a chance to go and, cause I'm going to live there and I'm going to have a chance to, um, it's a, just a great Bigfoot state. So, um, we'll be able to, to, uh, set something up. Um, all right. So let's give uh, Deb and Matt a quick question. Then we're going to jump into the fireside chat. Yeah. So I heard someone mention a spirit box and I'm, I also think all of the paranormal is connected. So I was just wondering if anyone has ever tried to use a spirit box to reach 
NHI, also known as non-human intelligence. And I don't mean Bigfoot. I do mean aliens, guys. Let's just say it. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody here done that? Uh, Matt? Matt? Do you really what? think <laughs> that I would ever <laughs> try to do that? I, no. I think you, you, no. well, no shot, <laughs> no shot. Matt grew up in a haunted house too. So just, you know, be aware of that he had to deal with a lot. <laughs> Here's on. my spirit box. This is how mine works. Hey, y'all there. <laughs> <laughs> D- DJ, could you tell us more about a spirit box? Is it, is it sort of like the um, old school, you know, uh, Ouija board? I think Deb is going to actually be better to explain it. I've seen it on a couple of documentaries, seen them use it, but I'm not sure about the technology or frequency they're using. Deb or Nathan, could you yeah. uh, school us up on that? It rapidly goes through all of the radio channels. Um, I think, you know, there's some debate. I think some people say AM, FM, doesn't matter. The point is it just um, essentially sentences are formed by words being picked up from those channels. And, and I mean, it's rapidly going through. So for a sentence to come out is somewhat amazing if it makes sense. Um, I can say that I've tried to use them without much success before. Um, but some people think they're amazing and, you know, things can happen with them. So it's a tool. Well, yeah, I, and, and I'm sorry. Mick go ha- ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say Mick has that audio. And if he if he uh, authorizes me to share it. I'll, I'll share it with you guys and you can just listen to it and, and listen to him having, you know, pretty decent conversations with a couple of different spirits on that. So um, so more to come on that. <laughs> um, but it, did you uh, did you have something, Matt? I'm just kind of curious uh, how you all decided to go with this particular category for a podcast where you decided that you did want to start a podcast. That's a good question. Well, Tim is the one who got us started. Tim's actually the author of several children's Bigfoot books. So they're Bigfoot themed children's books. And during COVID, he was supposed to go to like a Comic-Con type of event. And it got canceled, of course, because everything got canceled. And it went online instead. And he was given a two-hour time slot to fill. And he thought, how in the world am I going to fill two hours talking about my children's books. So he asked Smitty and I to come on and be kind of Bigfoot panelists, ask questions about Bigfoot, which of course at the time I knew nothing about. So I came with all kinds of questions like, is it just one Bigfoot or are there multiple Bigfoot things that of course I've learned a lot about since, but we had so much darn fun. We filled two hours, no problem. And we thought, okay, let's do it. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go forward from here and do all things that explained. So Bigfoot, UFOs, aliens, electric Big voice phenomenon. Yeah. my. F- Plural. Favorite, oh. Yeah, my favorite question that night came, we didn't tell anybody this, but it came from CJ's parents <laughs> who wanted to know, can Bigfoot get COVID? And if so, is it decimating their population? So that was my favorite question <laughs> of that particular night. And I'm glad you mentioned electronic voice phenomenon because, uh, Dale, back to your question about the spirit box. As far as I know, CJ or Smitty or myself have not communicated with aliens via spirit box, but we had a guest on our show who shocked us with what we considered a revelation. I think most people, when they hear about electronic voice phenomenon, they think of, of ghosts, spirits, ghosts, souls, what have you. Well, shout out to electronic voice pioneer, Gary Arnold. We had him on the show and he, and we just asked him, you know, well, who are these folks you're hearing on the EVP recordings. And he said, they're aliens. They're extraterrestrials. And that just caught us totally by surprise. And, and for the, 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 for uh, CJ's mom, I actually wouldn't be surprised if we, if they had very close physical contact with a Bigfoot and a human that had COVID, I would not be surprised, which is why you guys saw that when they, sent those uh, lunar landers basically over to Mars. I mean, the amount of cleanliness that they kept, I mean, that they were fully masked, gloved, uh, just head to toe in suits working on that because they said we could introduce a biological uh, malady to that planet that doesn't exist. And 
if Bigfoot has not, you know, obviously they don't spend a lot of time in physical contact with humans. Albert Osman, not, <laughs> notwithstanding, and you guys can, if you guys haven't heard that story, that that's a good one. Um, then, um, yeah, obviously you wouldn't want to to be in that. Uh, Matt, do, would you like to take that question from Duncan that's in the chat real quick? Uh, you're best equipped to answer this. So, oh geez, look at that. <laughs> Is this a paid question? What's going on here, man? We just talked about this. Duncan, thank you for the check. But no, go ahead, go ahead, please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> we don't know nothing. I mean, somebody, uh, just recently posed the question, you know, what do you think Bigfoot is, which that question gets asked all the time. And if we break it down in the simplest terms, uh, based on eyewitness descriptions, uh, leaving speculation and theory and all that stuff out of it and just going with the traits that mostly everybody says are there. Uh, I mean, we see that they're covered in hair, so they're mammals. Uh, they fit the description of a primate based on our categorization of things on this planet. So in that sense, we kind of know that they're a primate if we're right about them being from here. But then recently, somebody kind of posed the question about, well, what if they're aliens? Uh, you know, there's been a lot of theories about uh, aliens doing, you know, hybridization with humans and, you know, uh, the whole cattle mutilations thing, uh, some kind of experiments going on. Is it possible that maybe at some point in time, aliens created this hybrid creature that we come to know as Bigfoot later on? It's an interesting theory. And there's a lot of, uh, reports out there that do sort of, uh, tie Bigfoot sightings in with, UFO sightings, strange light sightings, especially orbs. Orbs are seen all the time in uh, the Bigfoot community. So it's an interesting theory uh, that I've just kind of started to look at. It's not really something I'd ever thought about before. But yeah, I would say why not? Because there's certainly how there's nothing else on this planet like humans. There's really nothing else on this planet like Bigfoot either. So it's an interesting concept to think about. Thank you. for the, That's a great answer for a topic that, you know, we know that there's a biological component to that that's been, you know, verified over, you know, people say that sightings aren't data. I'm sure you guys would agree that enough sightings from enough credible people, it, it forms, you know, it is data at that point. Um, so they know that, but we don't know what's beyond that. We just don't, we just don't know. Uh, we, we've talked, I think, uh, Tim and I talked about the ghost hypothesis, uh, but we can get into that later. I don't want to take up too much time. We got to start uh, the um, we got to start the fireside. And Nathan, do we have a fire going behind Smitty? I hope so. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> he can make nice. it happen, baby. So why don't we? Since uh, we haven't heard as much from Smitty, why don't we start with him and then we'll go clockwise? Um, you know, ar around the table. Okay, I just wanted to, in the last few years, we see where the movies Conjuring have been really big. What is your opinion on Ed and Lorraine Warren? Are they the real deal? I mean, this is the only guy supposedly a, a demonologist that's recognized by the Catholic Church. Are they real, fake, or what's your opinion? To be continued. Thanks. Like. Share. Follow. All things unexplained. more at linktree.com slash a t u podcast bigfoot u f o dot com so some of that i think sir will save for closed session